I am Carl Jacobs. I am running for Ward 2 City Council. I was born in Keene and have lived here since 1972. It's been a wonderful place to raise my two now grown children with excellent schools, recreation, and cultural events set in a beautiful environment. One of our greatest attributes is our environment and is our involvement and generosity to maintain and grow our community. Over the years, I've served on various boards and committees, including the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, the Historical Society of Cheshire County, the Keene Universalist Unitarian Church Board of Trustees, and as moderator of Ward 2. I have also volunteered as a guest chef at the Community Kitchen. I'm a member of the Monadnock Conservancy and of the Co-op, and I am chair of the board of Arts Alive, and I'm also chair of the Keene Agriculture Commission. I am currently retired from my day job, but I continue to work as a musician, playing jobs around the region. This means I have time to attend meetings and to be available to citizens. All this experience has given me a good understanding of how the city and the larger community function. I know and work well with all city departments. Our employees care about the city and are eager to make it better. I believe it is, oops, excuse me. Now about the issues we face today. There's a lot of discussion about taxes. Taxes are the main funding for the infrastructure and services people want. In the face of reduced support from state government, much has been done to reduce the size of keen government and improve efficient use of resources. Jobs have been eliminated. Spending is evaluated to ensure that saving money today does not lead to increased future expenses. The city is working with the schools and the county to find ways to avoid duplication and to buy commodities at more advantageous prices. We are a leader in recycling and renewable energy use. All this is good. I also believe that we need to expand our tax base through economic development efforts. We need to develop qualified workers to fill currently open local jobs. This is an ongoing cooperative effort involving business, government, and educators. We need to improve our transportation and broadband infrastructures to meet the needs of today's evolving businesses and residents. We need to continue efforts to redevelop the Marlboro Street Corridor and make it more business welcoming. This will also address east side flooding issues. We need to continue to market our region as a healthy and cultural rich area to work, live, and play. I also see the airport as an underdeveloped opportunity to support economic development and generate revenue for the city. I believe it is a time for efficiency, but also for investment in the future. If we focus on reducing taxes now, we risk higher costs in the future as problems are left unresolved. I am also very concerned about the heroin academic in the community, epidemic in the community. It is a hopeful sign that community leaders are meeting and working together to address the problem. We need to reduce the supply by prosecuting the dealers, but just as important is reducing the demand by treating the users. We are currently spending resources incarcerating users, but precious little on helping them become clean and sober. You, if we invest in treating users, we, we will be paid back in reduced crime and health costs. There are other areas I will continue to work on. Healthy Monadnock is bringing awareness and action to improve our region's health. Our support will again reduce community costs in the future. I'm working as part of a group creating a community fall festival in 2016. And I look forward to working with our next city manager. So there is work to be done and I'm ready to continue that work. I enjoy the work and I've been a positive contributor to the city council. Thank you for the opportunity to share these thoughts with you. Go well. Again, I'm Carl Jacobs, candidate for Ward 2 City Council. Hi, I'm Steve Hooper, and I'm running for Keene City Councilor in Ward 1. A little background on me before I get to the issues at hand. I'm 65 years old and have lived at 5 Colby Street in Keene for 27 years. I am married to Jackie Hooper, who works at Keene State, have a daughter, Althea, and a granddaughter, Brianne. I'm a professional photographer and videographer running Hooper Visuals. 
I am a photography instructor at Cheshire Academy for Lifelong Learning at Keene State College and worked as a photojournalist for 39 years, most recently at the Keene Sentinel, from which I retired three years ago. Organizations to which I have belonged are the American Red Cross, New Hampshire West Chapter, Board of Directors and Board Chair, Cheshire TV Board of Directors, Keen Trails Discussion Group, Rabbit Ear Films Executive Producer, and American Nurse at War Inc. Nonprofit Film Producer and Board President. I am running for Keene City Council because I think it is important for citizens to become involved in the community to try to make it a better place to live. Serving as a Keene City Council member is a great way to be part of the democratic process to promote positive change and as a Ward 1 Councilor, I will work hard to represent its residents in a fair and balanced way by listening closely to their concerns. I have leadership qualities having chaired a board of 15 people for three years at the New Hampshire West Chapter American Red Cross in Keene and was honored with the Clara Barton Award for my leadership there. Therefore, I believe I can effectively be one of 15 counselors leading the city of Keene. Now to the issues. On taxes, yes, Keene taxes are too high. I will work to find a creative way to keep taxes at a reasonable rate and at the same time will strive for adequate services to be delivered to Keene citizens. State expenses thrown at New Hampshire cities such as retirement compensation are out of our control but spending needs to be cut to help lower the yearly increase in property taxes. Guess what? Folks on Social Security are not getting a raise this year. We are still in a recession in this part of the state. On the other side of the coin, for example, the city should continue to add revenue to improve the roads and streets. I would suggest that each city department look at ways to trim their budgets. Also, the city council should investigate other ways to generate revenues. There are several challenges directly affecting people in Ward 1. A, building a healthy relationship between the city and Keene State College through positive dialogue. I plan on becoming active in the Southeast Keene Neighborhood Group to work with Keene State College administration and students to make sure our neighborhoods in Ward 1 are safe. The College City Committee organized by Mayor Lane is a positive start to building a stronger college city relationship. B. Marlboro Street Rezoning. I commend the Marlboro Street Rezoning Project Ad Hoc Committee for their hard work. I will support their recommendations to the City of Keene Planning Department as revitalization of this area will improve the quality of life in Ward 1 and benefit the city as a whole. Specifically, I will support the committee's recommendation to address the flooding problem and to limit additional converted student housing from single-family homes to help modify population density. I would like to see parking problems addressed as well. C. Airport tree cutting. I will strive for a fair balance for the Ward 1 citizens living near the Keene Dillon Hopkins Airport and the safety needs for air traffic using the airport. If 100-foot tall trees are eventually cut to improve air safety, then monies need to be allocated to plant an equal number of 10 to 15 foot trees to replace them. Without this commitment by the city and other parties, there will not be an appropriate buffer zone for the residents near the airport. D, the proposed expansion of the historic district on Main Street. Preserving the historic look of Keene is important and I strongly support that, but not at the expense of potentially reaching into individual homeowners pockets. I believe the Heritage Commission can achieve their goals by working with individual homeowners who I believe already have pride in how their historic houses look without a new ordinance. Plus, much of Main Street is part of Keene State College that is exempt from any ordinance enacted. This strikes me as unfair to the homeowners on Main Street to have to follow an ordinance when Keene State College is not. In conclusion, I ask for your vote on November 3rd. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mike Giacomo, and I'm running for Keene City Councilor at large. I'm running for Keene City Councilor because I believe that Keene City Council has become disconnected 
from the people who they represent. I believe that Keene deserves a counselor who truly understands the needs of the future and present of Keene. Now, I love Keene. I've lived here for the last seven years in town, been working in Keene for the last 10, and I've spent nearly all 30 of, 30 of my 33 years on earth in Cheshire County. And needless to say, this town is fantastic. This has been a wonderful place to live, and as I'm recently engaged, I hope to raise a family here as well. But Keene has some very pressing issues. The first and foremost issue, which is one on everyone's lips, especially those running for council right now, is of course the heroin epidemic. I believe that the current councillors and the mayor and the police in Keene are doing a great job trying to combat this epidemic. However, I still believe there is more that can be done. Collaboration with many of the other cities and towns across New England that are also facing similar epidemics. I think that we have a lot to learn from some of the successful programs that might have been implemented across other areas. I'm a chemical engineer by trade, and I, we call this in engineering, it's a best practice sharing. We share our best practices so that hopefully down the road, we don't spend money in ways that aren't, haven't been proven to be effective. It's about efficiency. Spend our money in keen efficiency, efficiently. And that is, that is one of the primary concerns right now in the near term that's affecting the town and ripping apart families. It's horrible. And Keene has some other problems that are a little bit more underneath the surface. These are issues that will start to manifest themselves in the next five to 10 years and beyond that in the future. And to preface this, I'll say Keene's average age is approximately 33 to 34 years old right around the same age as myself. Now, in most places in the state, they have higher average ages than this. Keene is a quite young city on average compared to the rest of New Hampshire. And where some might think that this is a really positive thing, for instance, young people generally mean lots of young families, mean a lot of income into the local economies. Unfortunately, that part of the equation isn't coming through in Keene. We have a very young average age but yet our number of people in Keene who are actually between the ages of 5 and 18, school age, is way, way, way below the, both the national average and the state average. Keene is only 11% of its population is school age, compared to 17 for New Hampshire and 18 for the national average. Now this poses an interesting problem. We have all the people that are generally of the ages that are going to be having families. However, the families aren't here. What does this mean? Why are people not having families in Keene? Why are people leaving Keene in that age group? This question should be on the lips and on the minds of every counselor because this truly is the future of Keene. This is a pressing issue. In my involvement with the organizations around the city, they target a lot of young professionals. And as part of the research that I've done in this, we're finding a whole variety of reasons. There are as many reasons that people leave Keene as there are people that leave Keene. There are a couple themes, though, that carry throughout. One of these themes, of course, being the price of living in Keene. Rental properties average close to $1,000 per month and housing, if you can afford the property taxes, it gives you equal issues as well for cost. The other issue, of course, being productive jobs in town, industrial jobs. You lose your job, you're in a lot of trouble in Keene. There aren't a lot of jobs that you can find. So in order to face these issues, you need someone who isn't just the dad, isn't just aware of the data, but actually is the data. You need someone who is the future of Keene to help plan for the future of Keene. So on November 3rd, I urge you, vote for Keene. Vote for Keene's future. Vote for Mike Giacomo. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jay Kahn. I'm running for at-large city council. For 27 years, I've been a part of the Keene community having been recruited to Keene State College as Vice President for Finance and Planning. 
I've served this community in many different ways, in its health care services with the uh, Cheshire Medical Center, with the economic development uh, initiatives through the Mananak Economic Development Corporation, with small businesses trying to recruit people to the city of Keene with the Keene Chamber of Commerce. I've had the pleasure of working with many people across this city, uh, things that uh, have improved services, library services through Keene Link, internet services through Manadnet, uh, regional center for advanced manufacturing, uh, a collaborative between Keene State College, uh, River Valley Community College and Keene State College and local businesses trying to develop the manufacturing industries and keep them vibrant in the Monadnock region. I want to serve the citizens of Keene as a city councilor. It's important for me to contribute back to my community as I've evidenced over my 27 years in Keene. Now I'm going to take another step in my life. Uh, I, I look to move to a uh, retirement from Keene State College and try some things that I haven't had the opportunity to do. And one of those is elected office and working for the city through its city council and its local government. I feel I can contribute in a number of ways. My financial expertise is uh, something I can contribute. I hear the citizens of Keene talking about the taxes uh, and how it's just not contributing to the vibrancy of our city. I want to do that. I want to contribute to community vitality. And it takes a lot of different things. We've got to be a thriving community that attracts younger people. We've got over 5,000 college students in the city of Keene. They can contribute to our economic development and the, provide the workforce that our city needs. But they're looking for services that support them, that are competitive with other municipalities and cities that they're selecting uh, Keene among others. Those are things like good childcare, good schools, good recreational opportunities, uh, and employment opportunities that pay wages that, that free families from the stresses of income insecurity. We also need to keep in mind those who have been in our community for a long number of years, who've made contributions to the workforce and to the, the, the community not-for-profits and, and, and religious institutions in our community. We want to retain those citizens. They, they know the city. They can mentor students. They can mentor uh, their neighbors and friends. Uh, they are an important part of the city, and we, are, we need to make sure that home ownership is not a question mark for those uh, who have contributed and lived in the city for many years. I want to get things done. I want to make sure that city government works for people. Uh, if we can streamline processes, I want to be the person who questions the status quo, who looks at our processes and says, are we being efficient? Are we focusing on the big picture? Are we keeping our goals in mind? I want to help the City Council on an annual basis set goals, not just to set them and have them so that they're on somebody's shelf, but so that they're meaningful, measurable, and movable. And every year we should be evaluating those goals, coming back and making sure that we've moved the needle. I believe that the City of Keene is a wonderful place. It's got wonderful citizens. It has learned that it is not simply how much money you raise, but how you leverage the resources to get things done. I've had experience in doing that and working with many of the businesses, not-for-profit agencies, the educational institutions, the health institutions, and now with city government. And I've had a lot of experience with city government. We've got some important changes happening in this country at the presidential level, at the governor's level uh, and in the city manager's office. Keene is, has an opportunity to put forward a vision for its future and to convey that to entities that want to help us become more vibrant. I hope I can have your support in the November 3rd election and I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have of me.
I'm Bettina Chadborn, and I'm running for an at-large city council seat. Okay, so currently I am the Ward 2 city councilor. Uh, the wards, uh, boundary lines to the wards were changed, and so now if I want to run again, I would either need to run in Ward 3 against an incumbent or at large, and I've decided to run at large. Um, I've really enjoyed the past four years on council, and I want to continue my work. I um, have worked hard to establish good relationships with my constituents, city staff, and other counselors. It's really important for me to listen to constituents and address their concerns. If they call me or they email me, I always get back to them in a timely manner. If they need answers, I find them for them and I return their calls. Sometimes I um, uh, refer them to staff and then I still follow up to make sure that they've got what they needed. There's a lot of issues facing the city and I think my four years of experience can help move, move us forward. And we're in a transitional period to, right now as we continue the process of recruiting a new city manager. And while the city has a great staff, it's challenging to navigate without a city manager at the helm. Having current councilors remain on the council will provide the staff with consistency needed during the transition and it'll be a great asset for the new city manager. One of my jobs as a councilor is to run the city as efficiently and as effectively as possible. And what if we were to consider using zero-based budgeting? Zero-based budgeting is often used by businesses and the premise is to work from the ground up when building the budget. Um, the three highest cost centers are police, fire, and public works, and they're all essential services. What if each department head were to look at what they need in order to run their department the most effective way? This process allows department heads to ju justify what they need, and it provides a systematic process. Um, as a counselor, I would be in a better position to say the taxes are appropriate. Um, I'm suggesting that we review our current process, our current budgeting process. And uh, we've often relied on the Boston Consumer Price Index, and that shows our growth is less than some other cities, but it doesn't recognize people on fixed incomes. Another issue is economic vitality. There's little land available within the city limits um, for new businesses to relocate here. So I think we need to approach it on a cooperative basis. As a city, we already have established relationships with state senators, the state delegation, the, the various um, colleges in the area, and surrounding towns like Swansea. And we need to come together to formulate a regional approach, a regional plan. We need to engage the Chamber of Commerce to help recruit new businesses. And I think even engaging Senator Shaheen and Senator Ayotte along with New Hampshire Economic Resources and Development can help foster new growth. As a, as a city, we have viable resources available. We have information technology department that's working with New Hampshire Fast Roads to help increase broadband coverage. We have an airport that allows all types of aircraft, including large commercial jets. This is especially valuable in uh, retaining companies like CNS Wholesale. It allows them to maintain their headquarters here. And we need to ensure that the airport's viable while balancing the, the concerns of surrounding neighborhoods. We're redeveloping the Marlboro Street corridor and we're expanding the use of existing parks and adding services that offer today's youth more recreational options and we continue to work on green initiatives to address global warming. There, uh, um, re-elect me so I can work for you. Together we can make it a better community. Keene's already a great place to live. Let's make it the best. Thanks. Hello, I'm James Duffy and I'm running for Ward 4 City Councilor. I'm seeking re-election as your Ward 4 Counselor because I believe I can still, uh, with the utmost confidence, fulfill my obligations to all of you as, as your Ward 4 representative. I believe I have the diligence and integrity uh, to serve us all in the best possible way, and I believe our most important resource is each other. That's the cornerstone of my uh, tenure so far on the Keene City Council. 
three terms at large, and one term as your Ward 4 counselor. I think there's many difficult issues that are happening today that require experience and the ability to think on one's feet, take leadership, but also listen and try to integrate all the varying opinions and facts needed to govern our city in the best way we can. I have been uh, in the last year very busy trying to create initiatives that not only will serve the council, but every citizen in Keene, and particularly citizens in Ward 4. Ward 4 has very specific issues right now. Uh, the Wheelock Park Master Plan is going to be finished soon. I know many of us have noticed that uh, there have been some improvements made uh, with the infrastructure, the paving, and things like that, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. There's a proposed skate park, and also uh, probably not as likely uh, to happen as, as soon as the decision is made on, on the skate park, a dog park. We're doing our best to improve parking and to minimize uh, the cost to the taxpayer. I don't know if everybody is aware, but uh, when uh, the, uh, the land in, in what I call the sand pit, a place I miss greatly, uh, walking through with my dogs and also uh, with my family and on my own, uh, that uh, a transformer is being built. Uh, the money of that sale, of that land, uh, through a, an agreement made many years ago, uh, stipulated that the city could not use any proceeds from that sale other than to improve our parks and recreation. Uh, so that money uh, is, is, is being uh, reviewed uh, and how to best be spent. I want the people of Ward 4 uh, to know that I want to listen to all of their concerns and to work as hard as I can to make sure we develop compromises that benefit us all. The other uh, thing that is, is difficult is even though Wheelock Park is in Ward 4, many, 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 many people uh, take advantage of uh, what's already there. We have softball leagues, we have horseshoe, we have uh, Parks and Rec has soccer, we have volleyball, uh, playgrounds for kids. Uh, we're trying to make it more organized and less stressful to get in and out of there, and I think we are succeeding. The other issue, I think, uh, that is affecting all of us uh, is the heroin epidemic. Uh, I can tell you that I have seen uh, evidence of, of heroin use in Wheelock Park. Uh, I can assure you that law enforcement is aware and doing the best they can to make sure that uh, paraphernalia and most importantly hypodermic needles are not in that park and putting our children at risk or anyone at risk for, for that for that matter. Um, there's another issue in Ward 4 I think we need to really start paying more attention to, and that's the impact uh, of the pending uh, closure of Jonathan Daniels School. I know that has been a very difficult process. Uh, the city has not been directly involved, but I believe that uh, as, as time goes on and that date does occur, there's going to be a lot of questions and, uh, and uh, things needed to be answered. Uh, finally, I am uh, very concerned about uh, the flooding that seems to happen uh, very often, and I know Maple Acres has, has borne the brunt of that uh, for many, many years, and I'm committed to, to trying to uh, find solutions uh, that are cost-effective and will help preserve our property values. I also want to say that I'm very, very, very concerned about our tax rate. Uh, but I am also, and this is in complete contrast with uh, my opponent, Bob Sutherland, I don't think lower spending is the answer. I think increasing our assessed value uh, is the answer and to continue to spend our money efficiently. Uh, I want to thank you, and I think I have a few more seconds. Uh, polling is at November 3rd. Uh, the Ward 4 poll is at Simons Elementary School. If you don't bring your ID, you may have to fill out a form, um, but please vote on November 3rd. Hi, my name is George Hansel, and I'm running for one of the five at-large seats on the Keene City Council. I'm optimistic about Keene and our future. 
We have active and engaged citizens, a great education system, and a strong business community. We're well positioned to aggressively pursue new opportunities and secure a sustainable economic future. If elected, I'll spearhead a targeted and proactive economic development strategy. We will identify and target businesses that we think would be a good fit for our community. We'll go out and get these businesses and opportunities, not just wait for them to come to us. I know this will work because I've seen it happen. It was a similar campaign that brought my family company, Filtrine Manufacturing, all the way up from New Jersey to the Monadnock region back in the early 1970s. Since then, our company has been able to give back by supplying jobs, but also by contributing to many local causes and community development projects, such as the Monadnock Food Co-op Development and our annual United Way campaigns. I feel so strongly about the issue of economic development because I believe many, if not most, of our city's challenges will be improved or overcome by bringing new businesses with high paying jobs. Some of the advantages to adding more businesses are stabilizing the property tax rate by broadening the base and raising property values, retaining more young professionals and young families because professionals tend to go or stay where the opportunities are. Increasing the demand for owner-occupied single-family homes close to downtown. Increasing this demand is a market-driven incentive for property owners to get back into the flipping houses business, which raises property values, instead of offering low-end rentals to college students, which tends to depreciate them. Now I'll talk a little bit about myself and my background. I'm currently National Sales Manager for Filtrine Manufacturing in Keene. We're a 114-year-old, fifth generation family business that manufactures and sells drinking fountains and high tech liquid cooling systems all over the world. In my role at Filtrine, I manage all of our US sales representatives, oversee several operations and marketing initiatives, and manage several R&D projects per year. My team and I have produced double digit sales growth year after year since I took my current position. We've grown and expanded, creating local jobs. I've hired several Keene State College students, and I've worked intimately with our local institutions, from the Cheshire Career Center at the high school, Keene State College, Antioch, and River Valley. In order to ensure that our education we provide in Keene matches the needs of local businesses. I'm an active member of both the Keene Planning Board and the Conservation Commission. In this role, I've worked with city employees and city officials to implement some of the initiatives that were started in the visioning and master plan work that took place between 2008 and 2010. Other organizations that I'm currently involved with include the Mayor's Committee on Drug Abuse Solutions, the leadership team for Monadnock Voices for Prevention, I'm an incorporator for Monadnock Family Services, on the development team for, for the Cheshire County System of Care grant. I'm also a board member for the Historical Society of Cheshire County and a member of both the Greater Keene Chamber of Commerce and the Cheshire County Fish and Game Club. My wife Katie is a hairstylist at Mia Capelli Salon on West Street. We live in West Keene on a small farm with our dogs, cats, uh, one chicken, and 13 goats. As you can probably tell, my background is diverse and I'm already actively involved in the initiatives and organizations that are finding solutions to most of the high priority challenges facing Keene today. From the heroin crisis to the flight of young professionals, I've been working on it, using my business management skills and optimistic energy to keep us moving forward. My primary goal since the beginning of this campaign has been to meet and listen to as many Keene residents as possible. I want to hear your concerns and empower you in your city government. Again, my name is George Hansel, and I'm asking you to put me to work for you by electing me to the Keene City Council on November 3rd. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bob Sutherland. I'm running for Ward 4 City Council for the City of Keene. I'm, hi, I'm glad to be here and thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm running for Ward 4 City Council because I feel that currently the uh, citizens of Keene, particularly in Ward 4, but all over Keene, are not properly being represented at the City Council. Uh, we have seen through the years our taxes consistently climb. 
uh, whether it's through operational costs that, are, that consistently grow or whether it's through custom uh, projects that the city decides that they want to uh, fund, whether it's for public good or whether it's for private businesses. These are things that I think need additional consideration and a, a focus on understanding what it is that the citizens of Keene want and whether or not these investments or, or, um, or projects are necessary at the cost that we are considering them. I can name a number of projects through the years where the city has overstated the expectations and delivered very high cost projects. First being the, the Main Street Roundabout. This is a project that cost the city taxpayers well over $4.2 million and still stands to have the um, telephone and uh, cable and other utilities undergrounded into a conduit that was built. At that cost, um, this, the $850,000 or $800,000 more, we would, be complete, we would complete the, the Main Street Roundabout project. But this is a project that if we had not spent on the uh, conduit underground, would have cost roughly a million dollars. I cautioned the city uh, in a public forum that this was unnecessary and that it was going to cost great, greater more than good to the benefit of the taxpayers. I know this because uh, in 19, nine, the summer of 1998, I worked for the Director of Finance for the City of Portsmouth. I worked on a number of different projects, one being uh, looking at undergrounding utilities. This is something that I, I can say, with all the research that I've done, is highly expensive. If there were people who wanted to come forward and fund this, whether it was Keene State College or private investors, I think that the citizens of Keene would have welcomed that. But for the citizens of Keene to pick up such, such a burden that was not any part of a, a, a improvement program project, this was done off budget. This is where we are spending money unnecessarily. We can also look more recently at the uh, KEEP or the Keene Energy Agriculture Project as well as Keene Ice. These are also two other projects that were conducted off budget out of the CIP program that the city council awarded private businesses monies, taxpayer monies, to help fund these projects. They are great ideas. It's great to have a, a new ice rink. It's great for, for businesses to operate a, an aquaculture plant. That's fine, but I don't think on the taxpayer dime. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm running for city council because I feel it's necessary to take a deeper look at these, at these special projects a deeper look at the way we spend money, uh, an analysis of comparing the city of Keene to other large cities around the state to understand how we invest our money, whether it's for operations or for special projects, and whether or not it's a good investment. We have a wonderful city here, but we are currently challenged financially. We are challenged economically. We have businesses closing and leaving town. We have a hard time attracting businesses because of our high tax rates. These are issues that need that, that also socioeconomically are leading to higher crime rates because of unemployment. Um, people, young people can't find jobs. And this is causing other um, factors such as drug problems and homelessness. These are, these are all part of the bigger picture. So what we need to do is we need to understand not only the, the, the trees in the forest, but the overall forest. We can address the issues like heroin problems, but we also need to address what is the, the root cause of some of these things. How is it that the city of Keene can, uh, can come up with better economic plans to attract businesses? We have um, numerous educators in the area so we can train the workforce. Franklin Pierce University, Keene State College, we have a, a wonderful state university system, as well as community college system, and we also have a graduate school here, Antioch New England University. They can train the, the, the growth for the growth needs of Keene and our economy. Thank you very much for your time. Please vote for me. Ward 4, Bob Sutherland. My name is Tom Powers and I'm running for re-election as the Ward 5 City Councilor. Well, I'm running for re-election for Ward 5. I've been a 28-year resident of Ward 
five along with my family. And I believe that I can uh, successfully continue some of the projects that have begun in the last four years in the next term. And of course, over the course of the next year or so, the city is going to be challenged with a number of uh, projects, uh, tasks, and uh, perhaps some, uh, some different um, venues on how we were going to look at our tax structure and economic development. So I feel that the experience I gained as an elected official in the last four years will be very helpful for the next term. I would mention that uh, if re-elected, and I hope you'd vote for me, uh, I will only run for this uh, second term. I believe that uh, it would be very beneficial to City Council for some turnover from time to time. So serving two terms of a four-year ward councilor is a significant amount of time. And I would hope that uh, what I've done for the city during that period of time uh, could be improved upon by somebody else and give another person experience and an opportunity to serve their community. I think it's vital that the citizens of any community become involved. Uh, it's a part of the vitality of the community, uh, whether you do it as a volunteer, an elected official, or just plain coming out to help on different occasions. Because there is so much that needs to be done in a community. And it all can't be done by the staff or just by the elected officials. So the involvement is very, very important. You know, uh, people say, what's important to you in the city? And quite frankly, everything that uh, citizens involved in is important to me because it affects in each and individuals in the community. It may even affect me myself. The challenge is for us to determine what's the priority of all of those issues. So as a member of the City Council, you have an opportunity to look at all the different aspects of different programs or different things that are going on, and you attempt to prioritize uh, so that you can serve the community well and serve the needs of the citizens. So what would my, uh, my top priorities be? Well, I think I categorize them in a, in a couple of different areas. Health, welfare, and safety is a major priority. In other words, what we can do to protect and help the citizens of the community. The second priority is the infrastructure. We have in this city, of course, a water and a sewer system and a street system uh, that's significant in its size and its operations. We need to keep that in its best shape uh, so that it doesn't uh, cost us an extraordinary amount of money uh, for repairs. In, in other words, routine maintenance is a priority. Recognizing that some of this infrastructure was built 50 or 60 years ago, we do have to completely reconstruct certain areas. But in reality, in a pre plan program, we should be able to do that significantly without uh, raising tax rates in a fashion that's not organized. So looking at the CIP, we should address each and every one of those um, infrastructure programs. My next priority would be um, that we continue to maintain our own facilities and the programs that are doing well, and perhaps relook at those programs that aren't doing well, but maintain what we have in a fashion that it serves the public very, very well. And then uh, most, most importantly, but not number four or the final priority, is that we need to continue to invest in our future by expanding the, expanding the tax base. We have only so much real estate in the city and we need to expand that real estate with development of companies, organizations, and programs that will bring jobs to the community, thereby sharing uh, the cost of doing business. When we have that kind of opportunity, people who grow up in this community and educated will continue to live in this community. Others will come to the community and become involved, like so many others, and make the city of Keene the wonderful place it is to live and raise a family, work, play, and have a good time. Thank you very much.